This is a shorter video here, but very important conceptually. It's about the timing of excitation contraction coupling. Because you always think about a neuron arriving at the muscle and then the muscle responding. And then another neuron sending another action potential, arriving at the muscle and then responding. So we want to think about the timing of that. How do we get the timing of that right? It turns out that muscle contraction lags behind action potential. So the action potential comes very fast. It comes in two to three milliseconds, and it's going to be delivered onto that muscle. So how long do you think it takes for a muscle to contract? You know, does it take two milliseconds, or does it take longer? So if you guessed that the contraction and relaxation takes longer, you were right. It takes about 100 milliseconds. So for every action potential, it's going to take, there's a delay there in the time that it's going to take for the muscle to do its thing. Why is that? Well, it has to arrive at the sarcolemma. It needs to come down the T-tubule. It needs to open the channel for sarcoplasmic reticulum. Calcium needs to come out. It needs to attach onto the troponin. See what I mean? I can go on and on until finally the myosin is starting to attach onto the actin and slide. So one action potential, we say, produces one twitch. And this twitch, don't think of it like when your eye twitches or your leg twitches. This is a physiological term. Uh, this is what we call one contraction relaxation cycle, which can only be seen in a lab, in an experiment, because we don't function that way as a body. You wouldn't just have one little contraction and stops. When you are holding a pen or lifting your computer or getting out, out of a chair, you can't have just one action potential, because by the time you tried to get out of your chair, you'd fall. So this is just seeing in a lab. If I were to hook up a muscle and let's say this was done in frogs, it's done in squid, um, and got a stimulator and stimulated that muscle just one time and stopped, two milliseconds only, that would create a twitch. It would make that muscle of that frog leg, let's say, contract once and stop. That's what a twitch is. So we could actually draw out a twitch, and it's down at the bottom here. So if you had nothing happening, this is tension in the muscle. Now let's say there's no tension. You've got your muscle relaxed. You're not holding up a weight in your arm and your forearm. You're just sitting there. And then you decide that you are going to pick it up, right? So it's going to, this muscle is going to contract and increase the tension, increase the tension, increase the tension, and then... You're going to release that tension, release that tension, and, and all this is going to happen if you stimulate that muscle once. Okay, 100 milliseconds, let's say. Some of them are faster. Fast twitch fibers are going to contract more quickly. So now let's come up to the upper part of that slide. So here, you would see what's happening in the neuron. Okay, this is now neuron up at the top, whereas before we were looking at muscle, neuron and muscle. So the action potential in the neuron is fast. It's going to peak up and sodium is going to enter and then potassium is going to leave and there you go. You've given it the stimulus. So you gave it the stimulus around here, correct? In that one spot. Let me get my pen. So the stimulus, if you line them up, up at the top here, that's when the first part of that stimulus came. And then it takes a little bit for the calcium to get where it has to be, for the tropomyosin to move out of the way and all that, and then this muscle starts to contract, and then it's over. Okay, so very quick. So because of this, you could still be delivering many of these two millisecond stimuli that are coming from the neuron, correct? 
And what would happen if you didn't just stimulate once and contract once? Right? What would happen if you stimulate again and again and again and again and again? First, let's look at that latent period. If I backtrack, the latent period here is the period between the time that the stimulus started and the time where you starting to see a contraction. So it's the delay between action potential on the motor end plate and the actual shortening of the muscle itself of the sarcomere. It needed time for calcium to be released, for the troponin tropomyosin uncovering of the actin binding sites, for the myosin had cross bridge to form, and that's when it's finally going to happen. So we say on average the contraction time is about 50 milliseconds, and the relaxation time is the time that it takes for the muscle to return to original length and the time that it takes for you to put that extra calcium back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The next set of slides then is going to continue on this um, theme and we're going to have um, I'm going to separate the lectures. You're going to have the lectures in a, in a separate lecture file. So these lectures are separated into two separate files.